हेलो एंड वेलकम एवरीवन दिस इज प्रोफेसर सिद्धार्थ सुराना आई होप यू गाइस आर डूइंग गुड और मैं तो हमेशा मस्ती रहता हूं वेलकम टू द आरटीपी लेक्चर ऑन सीए इंटर डायरेक्ट टैक्स आई नो इट्स बीन लॉन्ग यू बीन वेटिंग फॉर दिस वीडियो आई वाज ऑक्युपाइड विद अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स बट दिस आरटीपी वीडियो इज हियर एंड वेरी सून द रिमेनिंग रिवीजन कम अमेंडमेंट लेक्चर्स व्हिच यू गाइस हैव बीन वेटिंग फॉर विल आल्सो बी अपलोडेड ऑन द एसएस प्रो एंड यू कैन ऐप बिफोर वी बिगिन एज यू आर अवेयर Uh, that we have already uploaded the entire syllabus of ca interdirect tax in both languages hindi english mix is half on youtube and half on ss pro educare app no other app only ss pro educare app under free courses and the english lectures only the first lecture is on youtube the remaining lectures are again on ss pro educare app as far as the rtp is concerned it's a very small rtp so the entire lecture is going to be on youtube only and uh, at the end of this rtp there are a couple of uh, uh, new amendments which i have to uh, communicate to you so be with me till the end only then you will be knowing those amendments which were not covered in the uh, main course lecture so we have to cover it up uh, out here and uh, yes <coughs> major delivery language of this rtp is going to be uh, in english uh, especially uh, taking care of the students from down south Uh, however little bit hindi here and there is going to be used which you will also be comfortable thodi hindi to aapko bhi aati hai come on okay so uh, let's start without wasting any time our uh, ca inter direct tax rtp for may 2024 exam the first uh, the rtp begins with a case scenario where they have given you details of some ceo of a company where they have given you salary income they have given long term capital gain on listed equity share so you should know as you read you should be able to understand what they are basically trying to target if at all there is tax calculation this amount is going to be taken separately before that as you guys are aware i have said this in a lot of past lectures also but those who are new with me here whenever you get a case scenario based rtp an ideal way of doing it is it's a long story given if you observe that two pages only on the story so just to know which part of the story may be relevant for you while solving the question it is advisable for case study based rtp the new uh, paper pattern is out in our 15 marks uh, mcqs if you observe there are going to be two case studies first 6 uh, marks and 6 marks so three questions and three questions two case studies of 12 marks then one mcq of two mark and one mcq of one mark that's how they have made 15 marks in the new paper pattern of dt Uh, thereafter you have pgbp question of 15 marks so if you follow the system of add less no effect which was taught to you in the regular lectures 15 marks i am telling you income or expense treatment in account treatment in tax and you get these 15 marks also if you leave aside one or two silly mistakes here and there this area the mcq part and the pgbp part itself will take care of majorly your dt and the another good news which i have uh, communicated to some of the students personally but uh, for those who have not been in touch with me uh, another good news is that after these 30 marks go away that is your 15 mcq and 15 pgbp the remaining 20 marks are 10 10 mark questions three questions and you have to attempt any two because 30 plus 20 and in that it is not going to be one question of 10 marks it is 6 plus 4 5 plus 5 when the weightage of that individual question is so less 4 marks 5 marks 6 marks please understand they cannot ask a very difficult question they will ask you scope of total income they will ask you a uh, calculate residential status or they will ask you basic question on salary or a basic question on capital gain where they may keep adjustments like cost to the previous owner or fmv option so that 20 mark is going to also become scoring so if you tackle the difficult part of mcqs by solving all the mcqs that i have given our book as you are aware contains highest question across the country both subjective as well as mcqs if you tackle the mcqs and practice that add less no effect of pgbp wala part so let me tell you ladies and gentlemen you are going to be scoring good marks you, it is possible that dt will take care of your total but i know that idt in terms of size and difficulty level is much lower compared to dt so you guys love idt more i know that <laughs> okay so no melodrama please let us focus as i said first we should focus on the questions given so basically first question is asking which are the life insurance policies in which he will be eligible for exemption so there is some data given about life insurance policies we know that there is an amendment premium exceeding 5 lakh rupees then that policy new policy but is going to be 
taxable so we have to decide which option is better so while reading the data of the policy we will keep this in mind that which combo we can take as an exemption remember we have to take any combo as an exemption where the total premium does not exceed 5 lakh what would be your answer to mcq1 so there is some change in the data if x surrendered lic a in ay 2627 and claimed exemption in case of such lic means this lic he has surrendered in 2627 and this he has taken exemption means up to 250 already taken so ab jo combo banana hai usme a le liya hai and the remaining policies together should not be exceeding 250000 so maybe in our answer 1 a may not be an option but in answer 2 in question 2 maybe in our question 1 a may not be an option but in question 2 if they have said that a ka le liya hai to now you choose out of the remaining policies how can you make a better combo that is our second question what would be the amount of deduction available to Akash under chapter 6 say, if he has opted to shift out of the default tax regime? This is one of the things that I was waiting for uh, uh, for the RTP lecture to communicate this to you, uh, dear students. Uh, I, I think in the first uh, revision come amendment lecture also I said this. From now onwards, the default regime is the new regime. Remember, if the question says default means you have to do new regime because now default is new for individuals. So, 115 DAC. For the other cases, old is only default. But we are right now talking about individual. Inter is about individual HUF only. Default will be new. So when they say shift out or opt out, it means as per old regime. That means they are asking you chapter 6A if he is in old regime. Use your brain, please. If there is chapter 6A, that means it has to be out of the old regime. Obviously, brains. Okay. So yes, we will calculate chapter 6A. What is his tax liability? Oh, hey, Babu, matlab, do you understand? Chapter 6 they have done. Income you calculate, take this chapter 6 deduction, then you get net income. On that net income, you will have to calculate tax. And at the beginning, we saw salary was given, LTCG was given. On that LTCG, you have to apply as per 112A if it is long term. Or short term, hai 111. it is long term, to 112A and equity shared. So, it is going to go in that stock market. So, be careful about that. And what is Mr. Akash's tax liability if he has exercised the Option, achha, this is shift out of the default. Matlab, here you have to calculate under the default regime. That is, this is new. So, here it will be without chapter 6 deduction. And here it will be as per old because he has shifted out. So, okay, we will do that. And I think that's it. There are only 5 questions the, in the case study. The remaining are individual questions. So, we know this clearly in our mind. That we have got 2 questions on which insurance policy to take as an exemption. Uh, one on... Uh, chapter 6 a deduction and 2 on tax liability as per old and as per new. So, while now reading the main question, we will keep these things in mind and a trick like this, a trick like this can help you to, uh, uh, you know, uh, approach the question the moment you uh, know which are the 5 questions that they are asking. Accordingly, we will modify our reading pattern. This trick is going to help you when you are solving case scenarios in your exam. I hope this is very, very clear. Okay, so achha, by the way, one more thing uh, for the benefit of the students at large, like I have done for all the MCQs of my book, I have already solved them and uploaded the PDF under free courses tab of SS Pro Educare app, empowering the pro in you one to one mentorship in commerce from 11th to your professional qualification. Okay, so for your benefit and to keep the duration of the video a little less, what I have done is I have here also already solved the entire RTP so that I consume time only in the explanation. Uh, I consume time only in the explanation part. So let us go through what they are asking. So he has salary of 45 lakhs. Please understand this is uh, salary. So 45 lakh ka salary they have given a uh, little, you know, uh, clarify uh, clarification they should have uh, given about as to whether this is uh, uh, after taking standard deduction or they have not. Uh, said anything they have said he has earned this salary so we have to interpret a little liberally i'll explain when we come to the solving part of it long term capital gain as you are aware we have to separate it and first one lakh zero balance 10 percent dividend income 12 lakh from shares of indian companies which is taxable interest on saving bro 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 the moment you see interest income on saving fd remember one of the questions is on chapter 6 a now focus he is 47 years now. This is why reading the questions helps that we know that if it is 47 years, then he will fall under 80 TTA and only against this he can take 10,000. But had he been 
a senior citizen then against this total we would have taken 80 ttd of 50000 these are the things that you have to be careful about these are the things that you have to be careful about okay so i hope you uh, understand what is happening here what else mr akash has made the following payments towards medical insurance premium for health policies taken for his family member medical premium for spouse 43 years 13500 by check spouse is covered and it is allowed mode medical premium for mother age 65 years 26670 by check okay so that is also going to be eligible but remember for self spouse and dependent children it's a separate category for parents we have a separate category so spouse will come in the first category where we will apply limit of 25000 because non senior citizen and mother will come in the second category where we will apply the limit of 50000 preventive health checkup of 5500 each for his wife and mother in cash so apart from that he has paid 5.5 5.5 preventive health checkup remember under preventive health checkup cash is allowed okay that's the only payment under which cash is allowed but also that the total of these two can be only maximum of 5000 so we will see where we have more space remaining right now under 25000 limit and under 50000 limit we have plenty of space remaining we can take in any one of the categories but total of maximum 5000 we are not going to get 11 we will get only 5 but we will see akash also incurred medical expense by credit card of 17000 for treatment of his mother mother is insured and if your assessee if your patient is not the assessee if your patient is insured then you will not get the deduction of expenses but 27000 of his father who is also a senior citizen so father is senior citizen and not having insurance so we will take this so father ka 27 and mother ka 26 670 together will exhaust your parents limit of 50000 because senior citizen so now what we will do is we are going to take 13500 plus 5000 maximum for health checkup under the spouse category that is how we are going to do this question okay so we get our uh, deduction of 80 d from this paragraph we already have 80 tta out here remember the third question is about chapter 6 a deduction once you know the questions you know your approach and it's a very important trick when it comes to solving of case scenario based mcqs he has multiple life insurance policies so we have data about 80 d now they have given date of issue so this is old policy the amendment is not applicable premium can be uh, this is out of that limit of 5 lakh this is a new policy this will also be a new policy but it will start next year of course this will also be next to next year this will also be a new policy and this is a term insurance policy remember that the uh, limit is applicable only for uh, those policies which give you surrender value benefit those policies which give you something called maturity benefit term insurance policy is basically only for a death basis and thus such policies are not covered only in the amendment so this policy ka exemption is always going to be available this is an old policy its ka exemption is going to be available between these we have to select where a combo of premium not exceeding 5 lakh has to become our choice ideally we will be you know selecting these two based on that they are giving us uh, a limit of uh, 5 lakh but then in the second question they have said that if he has already taken this if he has taken this then you can't take this i hope you understand because their aggregate premium will exceed 5 lakh rupees if he has already taken this so then in option only this is going to remain so that should be clear to you these are the premium amounts now please understand you must have paid this premium in the current year this premium in the current year this premium in the current year these two premiums will start from next year but still this 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 together crosses your atc limit of 150 so we know atc 150 is done okay and also the gst component is not going to be eligible for deduction so we have to take only this much part also that limit which we apply that limit of 20 percent or 10 percent or 15 percent for disabled we will check this amount to decide whether it is within the limit or no okay total premium is uh, given to you uh, date of maturity is given of course that depends on the tenure of the policy consideration that you receive on maturity is given some assured is given so you can check on percentage basis whether it is within the limit or uh, not within the limit and uh, and finally on the basis of the data given choose the most appropriate answer question number one which are the insurance policies in respect of which mr akash would be eligible for exemption under 10 10d in respect of maturity proceeds focus please in respect of maturity now please understand when they ask maturity policy b cannot be in our discussion because policy b is term insurance and under term insurance there is no maturity benefit. 
there is only death benefit and remember death benefit under all circumstances is going to remain exempt under death benefit under death benefit uh, there is no tax at all so be you ignore let's focus on the others now was this policy taken earlier so the latest amendment is not going to be applicable correct so this we have to take and that 5 lakh limit also is not going to be applicable now from the remaining policies we have to choose a combo where of course y and z is possible because total is 5 lakh a and z possible because total is 450 but y and a will not be possible so y z and y a obviously when we take y and z the total exemption that we get is higher so accordingly with the explanation please understand any policy taken before 23 24 so that's the first policy which was taken earlier the amendment is not applicable correct and it is within 10 percent so that is going to remain exempt that's your policy x policy x is going to remain exempt because it is an old policy so x is selected b is disqualified because there is no maturity benefit the main thing is between the remaining which one we have to select what are your other options y plus z premium is 5 lakh and within 10 percent without gst we have to check the premium ka 10 percent limit without gst z plus a also as i discussed with you y plus z is an option 5 lakh ka z plus a is an option 4 lakh 50 ka but but a plus y a plus y is not going to be possible a plus y will not be possible okay as aggregate premium exceeds 5 lakh so we will obviously between these two choose y plus z as we get higher exemption accordingly policy x because that's an old policy amendment is not applicable and y plus z and thus our answer is going to become option a where we can take the benefit of x plus y plus z that is going to become our option x plus y plus z that is option a x plus y plus z that is option is that clear now second question in the second question they have said that he has taken exemption of it that means listen what will be your answer to question one if he has taken exemption of policy a first of all again question one means maturity proceeds this policy is not covered this is always going to be exempt irrespective now out of the remaining if i have taken this so what am i left with as my option if i have taken this then i can't take y then my only option will be this and accordingly my answer has to change from x plus y plus z to x plus z plus a because i have taken a they are saying they are saying what will be your answer if you have surrendered lic a and claimed exemption because i have taken a as an exemption then unfortunately y which is more beneficial will go away from my option and i will be left with x plus z plus a if claimed a then you are allowed to obviously only take only z is possible as an option with a y cannot be taken as discussed earlier so x plus z plus a which is given to us in our option c that is going to be obviously our answer third what would be the amount of deduction available to mr akash if you have noticed the oral discussion we have already seen that atc may he has exhausted his 1 lakh 50 000 with only the premium so atc is done let's talk about attta that also we discussed ttb is not applicable only 10 000 will be covered okay and as far as our ATD is also concerned, if you observe, parents ka full 50 because 26 plus 27 full 50 we have taken and wife ka 13,500 plus cash preventive health checkup ka 5. So, accordingly, if you observe, the third question is almost done. ATC is 1,50,000, ATTTA is 10,000, spouse ka premium 13,500, uh, mother and father ka total maximum 50 because senior citizen and this 5 will make it 68,500 and the total will become. 2,28,500 of course see i have written we can verify that 2,28,500 given to you an option c now what is mr akash ka tax liability for the assessment year 24 25 under the default tax regime default means from now onwards default means new regime then when we shift out then we will calculate as per old so let's understand under default tax regime even when we have to calculate tax our first duty will be to calculate income once we do income then only we can talk about tax remember in calculation of income we will not be able to give chapter 6 here but how are we going to calculate income we have been given salary 45 lakhs now they have said earned this much you don't earn after standard deduction you earn and then you take standard deduction means this is what you have earned 
From this, you will take standard deduction. Accordingly, your taxable salary will be 44 lakh 50,000. Then long term capital gain is clearly given, and we know whether old or new, special rate is always applicable. So, segregate that. Dividend income, saving account, FD account, all these interests are clearly given. You can take the total and you will get your gross total income 6365, which is also equal to the net income in the default regime. So, we have taken all our incomes. If you observe, we have taken salary of 45 lakh, but this is earned. So, you earn full, then you take standard deduction. So, we gave 50,000 here. This is your LTCG. All these incomes are taken and this is only your ent entity eh? because in new regime, no chapter 6. Eh? After getting your income correct, you still be careful. You have to segregate your income into two parts. So, LTCG will be stock market. Wala. So, 10% only of 554 year, you get 55,400 and the other income. So, from 6365, if you remove 654, you will be left with this other income on this. You will apply slabs of new regime means excess over 15 lakh ka 30%. 57 lakh 11,000 minus 15 lakh ka 30% plus 1 lakh 50. So, there is amendment in those slabs also. And accordingly, you will get your basic tax here. Of course, the total basic tax is this. NTTI is exceeding 50 lakh rupees. So, there will be 10% surcharge, 4% says 60 lakh 80,193. Of course, rounded off to 1680,190. Income and tax, you always round off to the nearest multiple of 10. So, 1680,190 given to us in option B, 16, 80, 190, that becomes our option B. So, question number 4, option B, we have also chosen option B. And the last question, what is Mr. Akash ka tax liability if he is opting to shift out? Shift out means he is going to the old regime, old regime. If he goes to the old regime, so what will be the change? Main change is going to be, he is going to get your Chapter 6 deduction. Let me remind you of one more thing. Standard deduction of salary 50,000 is now allowed in old as well as new. That is also an amendment. Okay. So, we have taken in the new regime also, we have taken uh, standard deduction and of course, old method it is going to be same only. The change is that from this GTI of 6365, we are going to get chapter 6. A. Main difference between old regime and new regime is chapter 6. A. Accordingly, this becomes your entity. A. LTCG ka tax does not change. Remember, special rates, whether old regime, new regime. A long term capital gain stock market or outside stock market, short term only stock market, casual winnings always segregate. Balance income, slabs of old. Ab old kaise hoga? 54, 82, 500, whatever you are getting here, usme se 10 lakhs apply karo. Add 30%, apply 30% and add 1 lakh 12,500. This minus 10 lakh into 30 plus 1 lakh 12,500. No change here. Okay. So that gives you your basic tax. Once again, more than 50 lakh, 10% surcharge, 4% says karke, 17, 34, 70. So, rounded off karke 173470 given to us in option A and that is how we get our fifth question ka answer. You notice that if your chapter 6 calculation was wrong, then you go wrong in all the three questions. Welcome to case study based MCQs. I always tell students that uh, practice, practice, practice MCQs, practice. Uh, MCQs, uh, you have difficulty, I will help you out, but practice MCQs because this takes, you know, a complete test of every detail, every detail, something like whether a cash paid health checkup is allowed or not allowed, parents ka limit of 50, but self ka limit of uh, 25, in that spouse is going to be covered, ATC ka limit, everything gets tested. This is, you know, like a test of your entire syllabus ka knowledge. If you are able to do these MCQs, then only, you know, you are fit for the Exam. Good students practice MCQs always. Okay. Chalo. Now we have those individual, individual, single, 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 matlab, not CA student ka love life, bro. single, single, matlab, standalone <laughs> MCQ, which is an individual question where there is uh, uh, no story given. Okay. Next question is based on the latest amendment that has come in your MSME wala, uh, 43B wala section. Of course, revision come amendment lecture of 43B is still remaining. So, first I will tell you a little about that MSME. I want to show you a small chart of the MSME amendment. Of course, in class I said that payment to micro and small enterprises is going to be taken care of. All right. Ah, sorry. Uh, I already told you in the regular lectures that there is an amendment payment to micro and small enterprises under MSME Act is going to be uh, eligible or liable for 43b that means 43b is that section where deduction is allowed only and only on payment basis if it is unpaid then the expense will be disallowed but a little detailing will be 
required there is a new circular issued and institute had tested on that circular generally the test on circulars only uh, the test on circular is only for uh, your uh, uh, ca final students but they have tested so let us discuss that under the msme act there are three types of people who register in that law micro enterprise small enterprise and medium enterprise okay uh, first listen to me carefully then later on i will scroll the chart and uh, with that scrolling you can uh, keep your uh, uh, you know you can take the screenshot or whatever you want so that you have this chart with you but first focus on what i am saying okay micro small and medium based on how much is the money raised by them how much is their investment in plant and machinery they are classified in three categories the latest amendment is applicable only if you have made purchases from micro and small please be very clear only if you have made purchases from micro and small means any purchases from medium even if your expense is unpaid on due basis it is going to be allowed 43b is not applicable be careful if there is payment to micro or small then deduction on payment basis medium enterprise is not covered in this amendment now when it comes to micro and small the amendment is applicable means such payments are covered under 43b the amendment says that you have to make payment within the time limit of msme act this is a little unfortunate you all are ca inter students you all are learning taxation for the first time msme act is not a part of the syllabus but institute is expecting that you know the time limit under msme act. what is that time limit under msme act? supposedly i am a businessman i have made purchases from you that means you are my supplier i have to make payment if i make payment i get deduction if you are medium enterprise then payment is not required always allowed 43b is not applicable if you are micro or small enterprise micro or small micro or small to go and check what is time limit between us if there is no written contract then i have to make payment within 15 days see when i buy goods from you we'll have a contract no payment within these many days if there is no written contract the time limit will be 15 days if there is a contract between us so the time limit is as per contract so if it is 20 days 25 days whatever it is written in the contract within that much time i should make payment but even if we mutually agree on a longer period maximum 45 days so in the absence of any written contract 15 days may i have to make payment and if there is a written contract then 45 days may i have to make payment maximum as per contract but maximum 45 the contract can exceed we can have mutual negotiation but as per as per msme act it should be maximum 45 days okay if i pay within this much time to you then the deduction is going to be there. but if i don't pay within this much time to you then i still have to make payment up to 31st march and it will be allowed if i miss the time limit of msme end, which can be 15 or 45 and i also miss the year end so if we remember for 43b time limit till due date of written filing july october november is not available it has to be paid up to 31st march and unpaid till 31st march also so this allowed so step by step check they go some step check karo. is it micro or small then only we discuss if it is medium it is always allowed story over medium hai to always allowed story over micro and small hai to msme ka time limit check if there is contract to as per contract but not more than 45 and if there is no contract to 50 agar utne time ke andar pay ho gaya even if you miss 31st march so it will be allowed nahi pay kiya supposedly aapne february mein purchase kiya 15 days or 45 days jo bhi hai 31st march ke pehle complete ho raha hai you have missed that time lekin 31st march ke pehle payment kar diya so it will still be allowed means ya to msme ke time limit ke andar kar do ya fir 31st march ke pehle extended time nahi milega do it within the time of msme act or at least before the year dono mein se kuch bhi kar liya to it will be allowed otherwise it will be this allowed so you will first step the step by step aapko kya check karna agar answer right hai. medium hai directly allow kar do kuch mat do next micro and small hai ye aapka second step hoga micro and small hai to msme ka time limit check karo agreement hai to as per agreement but maximum 45 agreement nahi hai to 15 uske andar ho gaya to allow stop ho jao uske andar nahi hai to last step check karo 31st march ke pehle to wapas allow wo bhi nahi hua to this allow that is how you are going to approach your msme wala amendment and jisko bhi ab ye chart ka thoda sa screenshot chahiye main pehle highlight nikal deta hu isko so that will make it a little uh, comfortable for you okay this was okay aap iska agar chahiye to screenshot le lena screenshot mein agar main aa raha hu to uska paisa alag se lagega google pay ka number de dunga
दिस इज गोइंग टू सोल्व दैट प्रॉब्लम एम एस एम फॉर यू ओके चलिए तो अब वापस आके फोकस करेंगे हमारे क्वेश्चन के ऊपर ए भाई इतना टाइम स्क्रीन शॉट में नहीं लगता अगर आपको लग रहा है क्योंकि यू आर जस्ट लॉस्ट इन नो पता है You can pause the video and take the screenshot. Check. Mr. Anil started the business of manufacturing tables in February 24. He follows mercantile system of accounting. He has purchased wood from three people, A, B, and C. The details of purchases are as follows. A is a micro enterprise. So MSME का law लगेगा. मतलब 43B लगेगा. Small enterprise लगेगा. Medium enterprise इसके ऊपर तो लगना ही. Now, date of purchase कुछ भी दिया amount of purchase कुछ भी दिया whatever is that all this is irrelevant हमको इसको चेक ही नहीं करना है this expense is going to be allowed 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 story over चल अब इसकी बात करते हैं कब परचेस किया 15th of February amount of purchases 5 lakh payment due date as per agreement मतलब agreement हुआ है agreement हुआ है तो agreement के हिसाब से time limit लगेगा what is the time limit 30 days what is the time limit agreement के हिसाब से क्या time limit है 30 days, which is within the 45 का limit. अब check करो, ये 15 February है, ये 29 March है. 30 days के अंदर हुआ है, नहीं हुआ. मतलब MSME का time limit तो miss हो गया. But 31 March के पहले हुआ ना, तो ये allowed रहेगा. मतलब ये भी allowed है और medium का तो देखना ही. Even if you have missed this 30, is it still before 31 March? तो हो गया. And let's talk about small enterprise. इसका डेट ऑफ परचेस 17 मार्च नो रिटर्न अग्रीमेंट मतलब आपको करना पड़ेगा विद इन पीरियड ऑफ 15 डेज हमने कब किया 15 अप्रैल एक महीने के बाद मतलब वी हैव मिस्ड एमएसएमई का टाइम लिमिट एंड वी हैव आल्सो मिस्ड 31 मार्च अगर 31 मार्च के पहले भी कर देता तो चल जाता बट बिकॉज वी हैव मिस्ड बोथ टाइम लिमिट्स ये आपका एक्सपेंस डिस हो जाएगा मतलब एट लैक एंड फाइव लैक इज गोइंग टू बी अलाउड हाउ मच डिडक्शन वुड बी अलाउड In respect of purchases, above purchases, in computing business income, 8 lakh तो वैसे भी अलग होने वाला था, 5 lakh में MSME miss किया, लेकिन 31 मार्च के पहले हुआ, और 7 lakh में आपका due date of return filing तक का time नहीं मिलेगा, तो it is going to be disallowed accordingly, 8 plus 5, 13 is going to be allowed as a deduction, ये 13 कैसे आया, let me show that to, let me show that to you. मीडियम को 43 भी नहीं लगेगा तो फुल 8 लाख विल बी अलाउड माइक्रो बियॉन्ड एमएसएमई टाइम लिमिट बट विद इन द प्रीवियस ईयर तो ये लगेगा ये बियॉन्ड द 15 डेज भी है और नेक्स्ट ईयर भी है तो ये नहीं मिलेगा एंड देयरफॉर 13 लाख इज गोइंग टू बी अलाउड एज अ डिडक्शन ओके चलिए नेक्स्ट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आपके टीसीएस के ऊपर जो एक अमेंडमेंट आया और उसमें भी एक सर्कुलर आया इंस्टीट्यूट हैज अगेन टेस्टेड अस ऑन अ सर्कुलर आउट ईयर तो मेरा आपसे एक रिकमेंडेशन है दैट इफ यू गो टू बीओएस नॉलेज पोर्टल वहां पे दे हैव रिलीज समथिंग कॉल्ड स्टैट्यूटरी अपडेट्स आप वहां पे जाके चेक करेंगे ना तो सर्कुलर दिया आप एक बार रीड करेंगे ना तो भी बहुत है नहीं करेंगे तो भी ठीक है एज लॉन्ग एज यू आर एबल टू डू दिस क्वेश्चंस बट इफ यू रीड इट वंस नो इट इज गोइंग टू बी इन योर इंटरेस्ट आई रिक्वेस्ट यू टू प्लीज रीड थ्रू द सर्कुलर्स रीड ओनली वंस मतलब जस्ट रीड प्लेन रीडिंग करना है और कुछ नहीं ओके दिस इज बेसिकली फॉरेन रेमिटेंसेस इफ यू आर अवेयर फॉरेन रेमिटेंसेस के अंदर लॉट्स एंड लॉट्स ऑफ अमेंडमेंट्स हैव टेकन प्लेस अबाउट द टीसीएस जो 0.5% 5% 20% एक्सेट्रा तो एक अमेंडमेंट ऐसा आया है कि जब मैं अलग अलग बैंक से रेमिटेंसेस करवाता हूं इन द सर्कुलर देयर मेंशन दिस व्हेन आई डू रेमिटेंसेस फ्रॉम डिफरेंट बैंक तो मैं उस बैंक को अगर एक डिक्लेरेशन फर्निश कर देता हूं अबाउट व्हाट आई हैव डन थ्रू द अदर बैंक्स तो जो वो 7 लाख का लिमिट लगता है वो टोटल के ऊपर एप्लीकेबल होगा अंडर टीसीएस व्हेन आई एम मेकिंग फॉरेन रेमिटेंसेस तो जिस मनी चेंजर के थ्रू आई एम सेंडिंग द मनी अब्रॉड दे विल कलेक्ट टीसीएस फ्रॉम मी एक सेवन लेख का थ्रेश दिया है सेवन लेख का थ्रेश इज अवेलेबल फॉर केसेस अदर देन द टूर ऑपरेटर टूर वाले को छोड़ के बाकी जो केसेस है उसके लिए सेवन लेख का थ्रेश दिया है तो व्हाट यू हैव टू चेक इज अगर मैंने अलग अलग लोगों से रेमिटेंसेस करवाया है बट आई हैव डिक्लेयर बिफोर देम कि मैंने दूसरे से भी करवाया तो वो सेवन लेख का लिमिट आपको एक ही बार मिलेगा तो अंडरस्टैंड वॉट इज द क्वेश्चन मिस्टर सुनील टू कैन एजुकेशन लोन ऑफ एट लैक ऑन फर्स्ट जुलाई ट्वेंटी फ्रॉम एस बी दैट्स योर फर्स्ट रेमिटर जिसके थ्रू आपने पैसा भेजा For his son's MBA from University of Oxford, UK, and remitted the same to the same bank, which is an authorized dealer under the liberalised remittance scheme. Then he further remitted two lakh on fifteenth October to his son for his personal expenditure out of his personal savings through Bank of India. Now, मतलब पहला वाला remittance SBI के through भेजा, दूसरा वाला remittance through Bank of India, which is also an authorised dealer under NRS. And he also remitted six lakh on twenty eight March out of personal saving under MN under NRS through Union Bank of India. 
फॉर हिस्स सिस्टर का मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट इन लंडन मतलब पहला वाला था एजुकेशन लोन दूसरा एजुकेशन लोन स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया सेकेंड वन वॉज सन का डे टू डे एक्सपेंडिचर थ्रू बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड थर्ड वन वॉज सिस्टर का मेडिकल ट्रीटमेंट थ्रू यूनियन बैंक ही हैज फर्निश द अंडरटेकिंग कंटेनिंग डिटेल्स ऑफ अवेयर लिमिटेंस टू बैंक ऑफ इंडिया एंड यूनियन बैंक ऑफ इंडिया मतलब एसबीआई से रेमिटेंस करवाया और बैंक ऑफ इंडिया को बोल दिया कि मैंने पहले ऑलरेडी इतना कर लिया सो एग्जॉस्ट माई सेवन का लिमिट वैसे देखना देन जब यूनियन बैंक से करवाया तो वापस जो एस बी आई एंड बैंक ऑफ इंडिया ही हैज ऑलरेडी गिवन दैट डेक्लेन तो दो सब्सिक्वेंट बैंक विल कंसिडर योर प्रीवियस रेमिटेंसेज वॉट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ टीसीएस टू बी कलेक्टेड इफ द अंडरटेकिंग इज फर्निश देन सेवन लैख का लिमिट विल बी ऑन द टोटल तो सबसे पहले इसने कहा से रेमिटेंस करवाया फ्रॉम स्टेट बैंक ऑफ इंडिया दैट इज एट लैख रुपीज इसके अंदर ही आपका सेवन लैख का थ्रेश होल्ड निकल जाएगा तो फर्स्ट सेवन लैख नो टीसीएस तो एस बी आई का बैलेंस बचा वन बोला वन कैसे बचा थ्रू एस बी आई आई हैव डन माई फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन प्लीज ऑब्जर्व दैट क्लियर थ्रू एस बी आई आई हैव डन माई फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन ऑफ एट लैक इसी में आई हैव टेकन माई सेवन लैख का थ्रेश होल्ड टूर को छोड़ के बाकी सब केस में सेवन लैख का थ्रेश होल्ड मिलता है वो इसमें चला गया तो बाकी का जो वन लैख बचा दैट वन लैख इज एजुकेशन लोन तो उसके ऊपर पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट पर्पज के ऊपर डिपेंड करता है एजुकेशन लोन है तो पॉइंट वन पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट फॉर एनी पर्पज विच इज नॉन एजुकेशन नॉन मेडिकल तो उसके ऊपर अभी लिमिट ट्वेंटी परसेंट हो गया है एंड मेडिकल एंड एजुकेशन अदर देन लोन है तो उसके ऊपर फाइव परसेंट हो गया है दैट इज द अमेंडमेंट दैट इज एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम फर्स्ट ऑफ अक्टूबर तो फर्स्ट सेवन लेख का लिमिट वी हैव एग्जॉस्टेड और बाकी के वन लेख पे पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट क्योंकि एजुकेशन नेक्स्ट रेमिटेंस आई डिड थ्रू बैंक ऑफ इंडिया और उसको पहले से पता है मैंने एस बी आई के थ्रू क्या रेमिट किया दे आर ऑलरेडी अवेयर आई हैव कम्युनिकेटेड तो ऑन दिस एंटायर टू लेख देव टू नाउ टेक टीसीएस फॉर्म इस पूरे टू लेख के ऊपर टीसीएस आएगा एंड दिस इज फॉर पर्सनल एक्सपेंसेस ऑफ दिस तो इस टू लैख के ऊपर ये भी फर्स्ट अक्टूबर के बाद है फर्स्ट अक्टूबर के बाद में आफ्टर सेवन लैख वी हैव टू अप्लाई ट्वेंटी परसेंट फॉर नॉन एजुकेशन नॉन मेडिकल तो इसके ऊपर ट्वेंटी परसेंट लगेगा एंड फाइनली जब मैंने यूनियन बैंक से रेमिटेंस करवाया विच इज सिक्स लैख आई हैव ऑलरेडी एग्जॉस्टेड माई लिमिट ऑफ सेवन लैख तो टीसीएस आएगा तो सही ऑन दी एंटायर अमाउंट बट जस्ट दैट पर्पज चेक कर लेना सो दैट यू नो द रेट दिस इज डन इन मार्च तो द लेटेस्ट रेट इज गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल एंड मेडिकल पर्पज के लिए फाइव परसेंट इज गोइंग टू बी एप्लीकेबल तो सेवन लैख के ऊपर कुछ नहीं आएगा वन लैख के ऊपर पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट टू लैख के ऊपर ट्वेंटी परसेंट एंड सिक्स लैख के ऊपर फाइव परसेंट विच इज गिवन टू अस इन अवर ऑप्शन बी टीसीएस पॉइंट फाइव परसेंट ऑफ वन लैख इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ एजुकेशन ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑन टू लैख इन रिस्पेक्ट ऑफ पर्सनल एक्सपेंडिचर एंड फाइव परसेंट ऑफ सिक्स लैख दैट इज गोइंग टू बी ऑप्शन बी इज गोइंग टू बी योर आंसर ओके नेक्स्ट मिस्टर गर्ग एज 45 फाइव इयर्स रेसिडेंट इन इंडिया हैविंग टोटल इनकम ऑफ फाइव लैख सेवेंटी थाउजेंड कंप्राइसिंग ऑफ लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन अंडर वन वन टू मतलब ट्वेंटी परसेंट वाला सेवेंटी थाउजेंड रुपीज है ये सेवेंटी पे ट्वेंटी परसेंट है लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल गेन अंडर वन वन टू है सो दैट्स वन लैख का जीरो एंड फिफ्टी थाउजेंड का टेन परसेंट वन 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 ए इनकम इज वन लैख दैट्स फिफ्टीन परसेंट एंड अदर इनकम ऑफ टू लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड Compute his tax liability under the default, 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 default. मतलब new regime. Very basic question. खाली one mistake or rather two mistakes I should tell you. Two mistakes if you don't make you will get this answer. Two mistakes is too much for MCQ. One mistake is also not allowed. But there are only two places where you will go wrong. Uh, assuming you know twenty, fifteen, one, 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 a, one, one, two, one, one, two, a. वो सब नहीं पता ना बाबू राम दोपहर तक. Okay. Let's see whether you understand what is happening here. I'll show you the two mistakes. This is NTTI five lakh six five lakh seventy. Remember, basic exemption will be three lakh rupees because default is new regime. Okay. So, I have segregated one one two seventy, one one two a one fifty, one 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 a one lakh other income two lakh fifty. Because there is an exhausted basic exemption limit. First, I have to pay fifty thousand. Now, who will take it? I'll bring it from the highest one. Means here, the fifty I have transferred here and utilize my basic exemption. Now, what am I left with? LTCG, which will be twenty percent. Here, so. Only fifty thousand का ten percent because first one lakh zero and यहाँ पे fifteen percent तो twenty thousand का twenty percent four thousand fifty thousand का ten percent will be five thousand and one lakh का fifteen percent will be fifteen thousand means four thousand five thousand and fifteen thousand ये मेरा basic tax हो आ five lakh में new regime में seven lakh तक rebate मिलता है so two mistakes one Unexhausted basic exemption and second rebate. Rebate will be available up to income of seven lakh, but maximum of twenty five. Hey, by the way, अपना tax कितना है? Four and five nine, nine and fifteen, twenty four to give full rebate. 
वन वन टू ए के अगेंस्ट रिबेट इज नॉट अलाउड रिबेट इज नॉट अलाउड सो यू कैन टेक दिस फोर थाउजेंड इन रिबेट एंड दिस फिफ्टीन इन रिबेट तो ये भी जीरो ये भी जीरो बट दिस फाइव थाउजेंड विल स्टे एज इट इज एंड इस पे फोर परसेंट सेस लगा के फाइव थाउजेंड टू हंड्रेड के हिसाब से योर आंसर इज गोइंग टू बी ब्रेव ऑप्शन बी ऑप्शन बी इज गोइंग टू बिकम योर आंसर शॉक लगा 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 शॉक लगा हाँ गाना गाते बात ओके विल कीप जैमिंग सेशन विल वाइप टूगेदर फर्स्ट बिकम सी ऑल राइट चलो लेट्स गो एड दिस वॉज द एंड ऑफ योर एम सी क्यू पार्ट द सब्जेक्टिव क्या बोल रहे हैं ऑब्जेक्टिव पार्ट नाउ वी गो टू द डिस्क्रिप्टिव द सब्जेक्टिव वाला पार्ट द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज बेसिकली लेडी कॉल्ड मिस रीटा इफ शील बी माई एज आई फ्लट विथ ऑल्सो बट शी मे नॉट बी माई एज अभी कैसे पता था चलो देखते हैं एन इंडियन सिटीजन एंड एम बी ए फ्रॉम हार्वर्ड हार्वर्ड का हार्वर्ड क्या लिखा है छोट जो भी होगा एम्प्लॉयड इन कंट्री है सिंस जून टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन शी केम टू इंडिया ऑन फिफ्टीन नवंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री एंड ज्वाइन द सीईओ ऑफ ऑटोफिट शी हैज कम बैक फॉर एम्प्लॉयमेंट परपजेज करेक्ट है नॉट फॉर विजिट Miss Rita was in India before she left for overseas education in May 2012. अच्छा 2012 में she had left. उसके पहले इंडिया में थी. 2016 से she has been working in this country A का AFL LLP and now she has come back to India. There is no income tax in country A. She has earned interest income of two lakh forty thousand in country A and salary income of fifteen lakh up to the date of her return. Salary computed from करंट ईयर जहां पे इसने काम किया थर्टीन लैख फिफ्टी एंड ऑन डिविडेंड वॉट वुड बी द रेजिडेंशियल स्टेटस अभी देखो जो सब्जेक्टिव क्वेश्चन है ना दे आर सॉल्व वेरी क्विकली डिस्कस दैम फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल विल फर्स्ट चेक हर स्टे इन इंडिया इन द करंट ईयर स्टे इन इंडिया इन द करंट ईयर हैज बीन विल स्टार्ट फ्रॉम विच डेट सी के फ्रॉम फिफ्टीन ऑफ नवंबर यहां से आप चेक करो तो आपका वन एटी टू तो नहीं हो रहा अच्छा सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव एप्लीकेबल अगर होगा भी देन ऑल्सो इफ यू ऑब्जर्व Uh, she has not been in India since 2016. मतलब उसका वो भी सेटिस्फाई नहीं हो रहा मतलब 182 नहीं हो रहा है सिक्सटी थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव इज एप्लीकेबल बट वो भी नहीं हो रहा है फाइनली वी हैव टू सी इफ शी इज अ डीम्ड रेसिडेंट वो भी हो सकती है शी इज इंडियन सिटीजन वो तो दिख रहा है देन शी इज नॉट अ टैक्स रेसिडेंट एनी वेर एल्स क्योंकि वो कंट्री एम है देर इज नो इनकम टैक्स ऐसा क्लियरली बोल दिया तो शी इज नॉट अ टैक्स रेसिडेंट एनी वेर एल्स बट देन वी हैव टू चेक इज अर इनकम एक्सीडिंग फिफ्टीन लैख रुपीज विच इनकम विच इनकम इंडियन इनकम इंडिया में इसको क्या क्या मिला एक तो ये सैलरी मिला है फ्रॉम ऑटोफिट विच इज थर्टीन लैख फिफ्टी इंडियन इनकम है ना फॉरेन का ओनली इफ कंट्रोल्ड फ्रॉम इंडिया भी बिल्कुल सो इंडियन ऑल फॉरेन का इफ कंट्रोल फॉरेन का देर इज नो इनकम विच इज कंट्रोल फ्रॉम इंडिया बट दिस थर्टीन फिफ्टी एंड दिस थ्री लैख मेक्स इट बेसिकली क्रॉसिंग ऑफ फिफ्टीन ये फिफ्टीन लैख देर फॉर सी बिकम्स अ केस ऑफ डीम्ड रेसिडेंट बट वी ऑल्सो नो के डीम्ड रेसिडेंट के अंदर इट इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी आर एन ओ आर डीम्ड रेसिडेंट कैन नेवर बी आर ओ आर इट विल ऑलवेज बी आर एन ओ आर एंड नाउ दैट वी नो दिस वी अंडरस्टैंड कि उनका इंडियन इनकम तो टैक्सेबल होगा बट फॉरेन इनकम कैन नॉट बी टैक्सेबल इन इंडिया फॉरेन इनकम वही टैक्सेबल होता है विच इज कंट्रोल फ्रॉम इंडिया बट शी डज नॉट हैव एनी सच फॉरेन इनकम हर फॉरेन इनकम इज ऑल डोमेस्टिक इनकम मतलब जो इसका इंडियन इनकम है ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ विच वी मेड हर रेसिडेंट फिफ्टीन लैख क्रॉस किया वही सिक्सटीन फिफ्टी इसके लिए टैक्सेबल हो जाएगी ओके एंड सैलरी इनकम कंप्यूटेड दिया देखो कंप्यूटेड वर्ड यूज किया ना दैट मीन स्टैंडर्ड डिडक्शन इज ऑलरेडी गिव अर्न बोला होता तो वी वुड हैव टू गिव Like we did in the first MCQ question, okay. Next is a basic question on your income from house uh, property. All right. So, is me kuch khas hai nahi. You just have to uh, apply your day-to-day -day basic uh, uh, principles of house property. However, I would like to uh, uh, bring to your attention one thing. The small little thing that you have to pay attention to is that he has got two houses, one in Delhi and other in. कानपुर कानपुर इज सेल्फ ऑक्यूपाइड एंड दिल्ली इज लेट ऑफ मतलब एक ही एसओपी एक एलओपी दैट इज फाइन दिल्ली हाउस का डेटा गिवन है स्टैंडर्ड रेंट म्यूनिसिपल वैल्यूएशन फेयर रेंट एक्चुअल रेंट म्यूनिसिपल टैक्सेस जो पेड है नो प्रॉब्लम म्यूनिसिपल टैक्स हां ये पेड बाय राज बोला हुआ है कानपुर फॉर कानपुर हाउस इज 3500 ही हैड टेकन अ लोन फ्रॉम एसबीआई एट 35 लाख 12% पर एनम ऑन अप्रैल 21 फॉर परचेस ऑफ द दिल्ली हाउस मतलब पहले इसने दिल्ली वाले हाउस के लिए दिल्ली वाला जो लेट आउट है उसके लिए लोन लिया था द स्टैम्प ड्यूटी वैल्यू ऑफ दिस हाउस वॉज फोर्टी लैख रुपीज एंड देन ही परचेस्ड अ प्लॉट इन कानपुर इन मे ट्वेंटी वन एंड कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑफ द कानपुर हाउस बिगेन इन 
जून ट्वेंटी वन कंस्ट्रक्शन वॉज कंप्लीटेड इन डिसम्बर ट्वेंटी टू सो वॉट यू नीड टू बी फोकसिंग यर दर इज दिस वन स्मॉल पॉइंट दैट आई वॉन्ट टू टेल यू दैट वी हैव बीन टॉट दैट वी गेट अ डिडक्शन अंडर एटी ई ए फॉर अवर फर्स्ट हाउस वेन ही अक्वायर द डेली हाउस एट दैट टाइम द कानपुर हाउस वॉज नॉट देर and because of that 80 eea is going to be allowed on his delhi house okay you have to be just be uh, you have to just be careful about this 80 eea ka 150000 ka deduction milega but i am somehow not comfortable with one thing that icai has then it is icai ka suggested answer so you will have to respect it you can later go through the answer and check this what icai has done is wo interest pura calculate karne ke baad mein they have given प्रेफरेंस टू एटी उन्होंने एटी का डेट लगा अलग कर एक्चुअली में यू फर्स्ट हैव टू टेक द डिडक्शन अंडर हाउस प्रॉपर्टी बट देन उसके बाद में अगर कुछ बचता है देन यू कैन टेक अप टू वन लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड इन एटी ई ए ये ई वाला केस नहीं है ई वाला केस वॉज ओनली लोन टेकन इन सिक्सटीन सेवेंटी दिस इज ई ए वाला केस बट वाई दे हैव डन लाइक दैट इज बिकॉज उस टाइम पे एक ही हाउस था तो आई वॉज एलिजिबल फॉर एटी ई ए लेटर आई गॉट दैट कानपुर हाउस का तो कंस्ट्रक्शन गॉट कम्प्लीटेड इन दर टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी थ्री तो वो वाला जो लोन है उसका डिडक्शन आई एम एलिजिबल तो हम क्या करेंगे एटीईए का डिडक्शन अलग करने के बाद में जो बाकी का बच्चा डेली हाउस को वो एलओपी बना के वी आर गोइंग टू टेक दैट दिस इज अ लिटल अगेंस्ट वॉट इज रिटर्न इन दी सेक्शन बट इंस्टीट्यूट ने यहाँ पे प्रेफरेंस एटीई ए को देख ली दे दिया बिकॉज बाई दिस टाइम द डेली हाउस हैज बिकम योर लेट आउट प्रॉपर्टी दैट इज द ओनली थिंग दैट यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल About the next question is a basic question of uh, capital gain. Uh, ये आपका you have to just be careful that advance अगर at the time of agreement is done through an allowed mode, तो you will be getting the facility of agreement date stamp duty value instead of possession date. बाकी सब वो दोनों का tax statement मतलब seller के लिए you have to see fifty c and receiver के लिए you have to check for the gift provision. So very very basic and easy question. Next question is on your 40 B का लिमिट सो पार्टनरशिप डीड इज गिविंग 13 परसेंट एंड रेम्यूनरेशन इज बिंग गिवन टू दी पार्टनर बट यू हैव टू बी केयरफुल दैट इंटरेस्ट का डिडक्शन विल बी रेस्ट्रिक्टेड टू 12 परसेंट और उसके बाद में यू आर गोइंग टू गेट योर रेम्यूनरेशन का डिडक्शन आफ्टर कैलकुलेशन ऑफ बुक प्रॉफिट नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज ऑन फाइलिंग ऑफ रिटर्न ऑफ इनकम राहुल एंड इंडियन सिटीजन फाइल रिटर्न ऑफ इनकम एवरी ईयर ऑन टाइम एज ईज आधार नंबर ई एज नॉट इंटीमेटेड इज आधार नंबर तो आधार नंबर इंटीमेट नहीं करने का जो फीस है फाइव हंड्रेड रुपीज थाउजेंड रुपीज बेसिकली दे हैव टेस्टेड यू ऑन दिस सो द बेसिक क्वेश्चन है इजी क्वेश्चन है दिस मच तो यू शुड बी प्रैक्टिसिंग इफ यू हैव सॉल्व्ड द एंटायर एडिशनल क्वेश्चन बैंक दैट आई हैव गिवन यू तो वो तो आपके लिए कुछ इट इज गोइंग टू बी अ केक वॉक टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट फॉर यू तो दैट लेडीज एंड जेंटमेन बिकम्स योर आर टी पी फॉर मे ट्वेंटी फोर अटेम्प्ट सी ए इंटरमीडिएट मेरे को जो एक दो चीज आपको बतानी थी उसमें एक तो फोर्टी थ्री बी आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड आई टोल्ड यू एट द बिगिनिंग ऑफ द लेक्चर दर कपल ऑफ थिंग्स आई हैव टू टेल यू एक तो फोर्टी थ्री बी आई हैव ऑलरेडी टोल्ड यू पूरा का पूरा चार्ट के साथ में और सेकेंड एक और चीज मेरे को आपको बतानी वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हुव अटेंडेड बैच वन बैच टू बैच थ्री प्लीज फोकस दैट देर इज एन एग्जामेशन ऑफ लीव एंड कैशमेंट अंडर सैलरी चैप्टर लीव एंड कैशमेंट सैलरी में एक तो अमेंडमेंट आया है विथ रिस्पेक्ट टू योर रेंट फ्री अकोमोडेशन का वैल्यूएशन दैट अमेंडमेंट वॉज बाय अ सर्कुलर अनाउंस्ड वाइल अवर बैचेस वर गोइंग ऑन तो इन द क्लास इट सेल्फ आई टोल्ड यू दिस एंड आई आल्सो टोल्ड यू दैट आई हैव करेक्टेड ऑल द आंसर्स बाय चांस आपको पुराना कैलकुलेशन कहीं पर भी दिखे तो यू प्लीज इग्नोर दैम वी हैव टू डू एज पर दी न्यू कैलकुलेशन लेकिन एक लीव एनकेशमेंट का अमेंडमेंट भी बाद में आया था आंटी इनकॉर्पोरेटेड इट लीव एनकेशमेंट का अमेंडमेंट बहुत सिंपल है छोटा सा अमेंडमेंट है दैट जो मैक्सिमम ओवर लाइफ टाइम का जो थ्रेश है जो थ्री लैख था नाउ मैक्सिमम ओवर लाइफ टाइम चेंज होके ट्वेंटी फाइव लैख हो गया सो दिस वॉज नॉट कवर्ड इन अवर मेन कोर्स लेक्चर आई ट्राई टू कम्युनिकेट टू ऑल द स्टूडेंट्स हु कॉन्टेक्टेड मी ऑल माई क्लास रूम स्टूडेंट्स थ्रू व्हाट्सएप मैसेजेस एक्सेट्रा बट बाई चांस अगर किसी स्टूडेंट तक वो मैसेज अभी तक भी नहीं गया है तो प्लीज मेक श्योर दैट यू मेक दिस चेंज लीव एनकेशमेंट का एक्सेप्शन का थ्रेश होल्ड मैक्सिम ओवर दी लाइफ टाइम इज नाउ इंक्रीज टू एनहेंस टू ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक रुपीज दिस इज दैट लास्ट वन थिंग विच आई हैड टू टेल यू एंड विद दिस लेडीज एंड जेंटमेन बी गेट डन विद अवर आर टी पी ऑफ सी एंटर फॉर मे ट्वेंटी फोर एग्जाम योर रिमेनिंग अवर रिविजन कम अमेंडमेंट लेक्चर विल सुन भी अवेलेबल ऑन दी एस एस प्रो एडुकेर एप ओनली लास्ट थ्री फोर लेक्चर आर लेफ्ट सो स्टे इंटर स्टे कनेक्टेड ऑल द बेस्ट लॉट्स ऑफ लव ओम नमस्ते बाय बाय टेक केयर